back to the phones we go. We're going to talk to Philip now, who's in Edmonton. Good evening. Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, Labrador iron ore royalty has been held steady, it seems, like during this volatile market for the last, whatever, few months now. However, it's very hard to follow up on the, on the, on the company, whether on the iron ore market, the dividend, or the price forecast. I wonder if David can give us some insight about Labrador iron ore royalty. Thank sure. you. Sure. So, Philip, uh, we talked earlier about reducing weightings in economically sensitive securities. This is economically sensitive, but this is a very large holding for us. Uh, of all of the basic materials, iron ore prices have held very strong uh, globally. Uh, Labrador Iron Ore is interesting because, of course, uh, they have their interest in the Iron Ore Company of Canada, <clears throat> but they, they get a royalty uh, on the iron ore that's produced. So if costs go up, it really doesn't hurt them. Uh, we think that the distribution is safe. Uh, we think uh, it looks strong. We think that if um, things were to settle out a little bit, the stock would move higher. It's trading you know, very close to the highs for the year. It pays us a nice yield, so there's yield support. Uh, and if you, if you believe <coughs> that it's possible that uh, growth can stay somewhat, even if it's muted, positive, then, then this should continue to do quite well. The price is moving around for the units because, frankly, there is lots of concern about the global economy. Uh, but if you're looking for something with a yield that gives you a little inflation protection, this is one that we think is kind of interesting. Am I right in saying that BHP, Billiton, Rio Tinto and Vale, along with China, basically set the price for iron ore? And they, they used to do it quarterly and now they do it more frequently, am I correct? Yes, or, yes, yeah? yes, that's right. Yes, that's right. Um, but the prices have been staying firm and there seems to be lots of demand for iron ore still. And um, so it's, it's in tight supply. There's only a few very large uh, suppliers, and uh, Iron Ore Company of Canada is one of them. All right, we're going to get uh, David's take on auto parts right now, specifically Magna. Here's Brian, who's in Toronto. Hi there. Hi, thank you for taking my call. You're welcome. I wanted to ask about a, a company that has a lot of uh, cash and no debt, uh, Magna International. Um, do you minus the cash from the, from the stock price when you're looking at a stock like this? And what's your opinion on it? Thanks for taking my call. Okay. So, uh, Brian, uh, let's just talk about the group to start with. We like the auto industry. Uh, specifically, while there's concerns around the economy, uh, when you look at what happened through 2008 and 9, there was a significant reduction in auto sales. And as a result, <coughs> um, there are fewer cars coming off lease today. Uh, there, there are... Um, uh, uh, and as a result, there's, there's, uh, there's a tighter market. The price for a used car is very high today relative to a new car. Um, also, when you look at what happened with the disruption in supply that was caused by the tsunami in Japan, that's had an impact on inventories, and inventories on car lots is relatively low. Um, during, the, during the recession, there were so many auto parts companies that went bankrupt uh, or shut down that the parts suppliers, there are fewer of them and they are more powerful from a pricing standpoint today. So we like the parts companies. Uh, we own uh, AutoZone in the US, which is an auto parts retailer, right. which is behaving extremely well. We own AutoNation in the US, which is car dealerships. Again, trading basically at 52 week highs. Um, and the auto parts companies, should the market get a little bit better, should perform quite well. Magna's been penalized a little bit because they've, they're, uh, they're going through a little bit of restructuring in the European divisions. Uh, but we understand business is strong in North America. Uh, I've also heard that uh, about other Canadian auto parts companies. So we don't own the stock currently. It's one certainly I'd keep an eye on. Uh, it pays a 3% dividend, uh, and they do have a, a very strong balance sheet. They're able to make acquisitions going through the recession that put them into, into some strong new, new areas. So I think that this is one you want to keep an eye on, and I think the auto parts sector is one that's interesting. I, I would wait to see the market behave a little bit better before stepping in, but this is one you'd certainly keep on your list. Okay, David, a short break here. We'll get back to uh, questions on North American large caps right after this. But a reminder that uh, you can get top picks and past picks sent straight to your inbox every night. BNN is sending those out along with analysis from our great roster of guests on the two shows. Just go to uh, bnn.ca forward slash subscribe. To sign up for our nightly newsletter, you'd be one of more than 50,000 who have done it already.